The Story of the Volkswagen Beetle When it comes to cars, nothing fits the definition of short but sweet more than a Volkswagen Beetle. It's not the fastest car ever made, but it's definitely one of the most iconic. So today, we're gonna talk about the origins of the storied car and its recent demise. In the early 1930s, the world's most infamous dictator Adolf Hitler wanted a car that the common, ordinary people could afford to own. For his plan, Hitler commissioned a Nazi engineer whose last name may be familiar to the years, Ferdinand Porsche. Yes, Porsche, as in the person in which the famous sports car are named after. Porsche designed a simple, economical, and affordable vehicle that they dubbed the People's Car, which turned out to be the Volkswagen Beetle or Bug that we know today. And just an additional nugget, Volks is actually the German word for people and wagon is for cars. So Volkswagen is the literal German translation of People's Car. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Over the years, there have been different versions of the Beetle, but the first one was known to the Nazis as the Type 1. This car had a rare air-cooled engine and had similarities to an earlier car built by Porsche himself that he called the Type 12. In 1938, Hitler built the Volkswagen factory in Wolfsburg, Germany and proclaimed that this new car is the Kraft durch Frutwagen or the Strength through Joy car. Unfortunately, production of the vehicle was stopped when World War II broke out in 1939. Nevertheless, some Beetles were still built to be used by Hitler's military officers. But of course, the mustached man himself didn't want any part of the car and was given the convertible. Say what you will, but the man had taste. In 1945, when World War II ended and Hitler was defeated, the British took control of the production of the Volkswagen Beetles and reopened its factory in Wolfsburg. And by the end of 1946, more than 10,000 cars were manufactured. In 1950, after the Volkswagen proved to be a hit in the overseas market, it finally made its way to America and after five years, Volkswagen of America was formed. In 1959, Volkswagen made history with its Think Small ad campaign done for them by Doyle Dane Bernbarch or DDB Advertising Agency. With copywriters Julian Koenig and Helmut Krohn at the helm, they made waves with an ad wherein a tiny beetle is found in the middle of a plane of white space. The ad then said the iconic line, Maybe we got so big because we thought small. In 1999, this Think Small ad was crowned by Ad Age as the best ad campaign of the century. In 1968, Disney boosted the Beatles' popularity when it released the six movies that featured Herbie the Lovebug, a racing beetle with the iconic number 53 found on different parts of the car. In their series, Herbie was a self-aware car that drove itself and won a lot of competitions in the racetrack. And of course, who could not forget the box office hit Herbie, Fully Loaded, that released in 2005, which showcased famous actress Lindsay Lohan alongside our favorite Beetle. And speaking of Beetle, here's another nugget. It was only in 1968 that Volkswagen officially called what was then Type 1 as the Beetle. It is also in that same year that the US became the most important foreign market for Volkswagen with about 40% of their production headed there. In 1971, Volkswagen introduced a premium version of the Bug, known as the Super Beetle. The vehicle was pimped out with a new front suspension and more trunk space under the hood. A year later, the Beetle made history again when it passed the Ford Model T as the best-selling car of all time. But eventually, the competition caught up with Volkswagen and by the 1980s, the sales of the car in America started declining. Thankfully, it was still going strong in other countries such as Brazil and Mexico. In 1994, Volkswagen tried to make a comeback in America and showed a modernized version of the Beetle in an auto show in Detroit. In 1998, it received its first major upgrade after 60 years. The new version came with lines that were similar to the Type 1s. It also boasted a 115 HP 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine, and the dashboard had a small base. In 1999, the world was introduced to the Shagmobile, a groovy beetle in the movie Austin Powers. It brought nostalgia to the consumers as the candy colors reminded them of the first versions. In 2003, the last Volkswagen Beetle Type 1 rolled off the production line in Puebla, Mexico, 
with the biggest hit for the beloved car came in 2015. During the diesel gate, when Volkswagen confessed that 11 million of their cars worldwide were included in the diesel deception. Basically, Volkswagen cheated on emission tests on their diesel car models, which unfortunately included the Beetle. Volkswagen paid over $30 billion to settle the issue. But it wasn't the only hit that the company suffered from. Even though the Beetle is iconic and has a worldwide fandom, what happened broke the people's trust, and by 2018, it only made up 4% of the sales of the company. It just wasn't selling as good as it used to, especially with consumers who prefer bigger cars now, like SUVs. In that same year, Volkswagen announced that they were gonna stop production of the car, and the Bye Bye Beetle hashtag made waves all over the world. In 2019, the last Volkswagen Beetle Final Edition left their Pueble factory for the last time and headed for a museum. After 81 years, from 1938 to 2019, the Volkswagen Beetle sold over 23 million units all in all. For a long time, it was a trustworthy, affordable, practical, and an iconic car. But like the famous saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Bye bye, Beetle. What can you say about the Volkswagen Beetle story? Do you have fond memories of the car? 